Do it, lady. You've resigned. And take your bloody NFTs with you. It seems today that all you see is bouncing locomotives and stuff on TV. But where are those good old-fashioned values on which we used to rely? Lucky there's the tales of the rails. You're lucky there's a man who positively can do all the things that make us laugh and wail. It's the tales of the Northwestern Rails. Ever since Diesel's antic in generating power for the Tidmouth Town Square, He's gained some of the engine's respect, but he wasn't too bothered. He still had a long way to go. One day at Tidmouth, he was in the shunting yards ready to take a train when he noticed a piece of rolling stock missing. Hold up, where's my brake van? Oh, Diesel, there you are. Sir Topham Hat wanted me to tell you about a new brake van that arrived and wanted you to take it with your train. Diesel was curious to know what the new brake van looked like. So he followed Humphrey to the Tinmouth repair yard where the brake van sat. It was very different from the other brake vans. It had a set of bogey wheels painted in bright red, had the number 43 on its side, and had a little compartment on top of its roof, known as a cupola. There he sat, being fitted with buffers, buffer beam, and chain link couplings. <laughs> I've never seen a brake man like him before. That's because he's from America, like me. Back there, he's called a caboose. Diesel buffered up while Humphrey spoke to the caboose. Hey, oh, Bruno. So, how do you like your new buffer beams? Well, it looks pretty cool. Nice. Now then, you will be with Diesel today. You will be a part of his train that needs to be taken to the Dryaw Airfield on the Farquhar branch line. Huh? Now, as a caboose, it's your responsibility to make sure Diesel's train arrives safely without any issues. Oh, and Diesel, please be mindful about Bruno. Um, Make sure the environment surrounding him is calm. I'll be sure to take a good care of him. Thank you. Diesel and Bruno left the repair yards and arrived at the shunting yards. While Diesel left to pick up his train, Bruno sat at the shunting yards with his eyes darting around the yards and station. Now Tidmouth could be really really busy with rolling stock being shunted to and fro engines arriving and departing at the station there's a lot of activity as well so much that bruno couldn't stand it His stepladder started to shake and rattle until finally Diesel came up. Right, Bruno. I got my trucks. Uh, is everything okay? It's way too busy around here. Diesel noticed Bruno feeling uncomfortable and remembered what Humphrey said. So he put on a smile and warmly said, uh, Don't worry, we'll be leaving now. Bruno was hitched to the train, and Diesel left for Dryaw Airfield. While Diesel was taking some freight to the airfield, Henry was bringing passengers. 
Here's the grub and beverages for the audience, sir. Spectacular. Thanks, Oliver. And here comes Henry with our audience. Henry arrived on time with the passenger train, followed by Diesel as well. Right on time, Diesel. You ready for the air show? An air show? Yes, where we watch numerous aircraft in the sky. Some of them do stunts and tricks. Diesel looked back at Bruno. He remembered his reaction to the ambience at Tidmouth Station. Well, if there's a quiet place for Bologna to watch it, that'd be good. Near the airfield was the dry all goods yard. Diesel took Bruno to a siding, and the two engines sat in the shed to watch the aircraft fly along the sky. The two locomotives and caboose had a great time, but the fun was going to end rapidly. And, and now, to, to conclude the show, we'll be going out with a bang with a jet to perform a sonic boom. A sonic boom? A sonic boom occurs when an object travels faster than the speed of sound, resulting in an extremely loud boom. Diesel's face went pale. He rushed to Bruno and coupled up. Diesel? What are you doing? He tried to pull him away from the yard, but Bruno's brakes were on. They couldn't be released without the guard. Time was running rail thin. Conductor, we have a problem. Conductor, we have a problem! 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 Crickling windshields, that was loud! The engine's eyes were widened and their axles tingled. But Bruno took it the worst. Bruno, Bruno, are you alright? His eyes were shut tight. His breathing was rapid and uneven. His stepladder shook and rattled. And worst of all, from the sonic boom, his windows were shattered. Oh dear, oh dear. What do I do now, Henry? There's a small harbor at the south of Nafford. Take him to the shoreline and hopefully he'll calm down there. Okay, we'll head there immediately. Thank you. Good luck. The guard released the brakes, and Diesel escorted Bruno to the South Napford Harbor. Easy now, Bruno. We are away from the airfield now. Take a look around you. Bruno slowly opened his eyes, looked at his surroundings, and began to settle down. Sand? Seagull? Ocean? This is much better. This gave Diesel a chance to talk to Bruno. Um, Bruno, if you don't mind me asking, what was that back there? You were breathing kind of funny. You did it twice a day, and I'm concerned. Well, I can't really explain it. It only happens whenever places get too loud, or busy, or whenever something goes wrong. I feel really uneasy. My stepladders shake and rattle. My vision would get funny, and I would not think straight. Diesel may not understand Bruno's condition fully, but continued to reassure him when he could. Well, I'm sure our controller will find a place for you to work where it's calm. Do you think so? I believe so. Then, in the distance, was a familiar whistle. It came from Henry, and emerging from his cab was Sir Topham Hatt. Diesel started to become worried. Uh, uh, have I done something wrong with Bruno? 
but as he was approached, Sir Topham Hatt wasn't cross at all. He was delighted. Diesel, Henry has told me what happened at the airfield, and you've done a fine job taking care of Bruno. You truly are a really useful engine. Diesel's smile beamed from buffer to buffer. And as for Bruno, he was taken back to the Tidmouth repair yard to have new windows installed with a thick layer of glass. Though every once in a while he's on mainline services, his main job was to work at the South Knapford Harbor bringing goods to and from the harbor to Ellsbridge. Whenever he got a chance, he would blow his air whistle to the passing engines on the Knapford Harbor bridges. The red caboose was having a really good feeling he was going to enjoy working on the Northwestern Railway. You can pull me fast, I don't mind the speed, but if you want to slow your roll then I've got what you need. Here we go, fast and slow, it's all a give and take. If the speed you pick is too quick, then I just say give me a break. Save the day in a different way, you can't just say give me a break. Give me a break, give me a break. Rolling down the rails, you're always picking up speed. I got your back to keep on track, that's why I take the lead. Getting there on time isn't just about luck. Don't let your speed become a stampede. You might just save a duck. Look out! Save the day in a different way. You can't just say, give me a break. Give me a break. Give me a break. Fast isn't faster if you roll into a lake. Save the day in a different way, you can't just say give me a break. Give me a break, give me a break. One of our most recent residents to come to the island of Sodor is Bruno, a caboose that originated from North America. Like many cabooses, Bruno used to be a part of goods trains along the American main lines. Unfortunately, with the introduction of air brakes and later on the end of train device, or EOD for short, the cabooses became obsolete and the last regulation was lifted in 1988. But luckily, like several other cabooses, Bruno was preserved. While some cabooses were in museums or repurposed for houses, Bruno, along with the rest of them, have been demoted to shunting as shoving platforms. Though on weekends, Bruno's a part of the party train. So Topham Hatch just happened to be on one of those during his American holiday and thought about purchasing Bruno to work on his railway. And so was done. Bruno arrived on Sodor and is currently working at the harbor line on the Farquhar branch. Although today was going to be his first trip down the main line with a certain red engine who's not pleased with the jobs he was given. Why multiple goods trains? Can't I do at least one passenger train today? Oh James, do stop complaining! You can't always do the jobs you love. I know it's not fair, but with your compassion, you're really helping out the railway and doing it a favor. Hello, James. I'd like you to meet Bruno. This is going to be his first time traversing through the main line, so I want you to make him feel safe and comfortable down the line. Sure, why not? It's not the first time I've pulled a sentient brake man. Very good. Now, Bruno, while James looks after you, you look after him and his trains. Okay then, Toby. My bricks are all set in case things go bad. Wonderful. Remember, you be good to your brakes, and they'll be good to you. So Bruno was hitched up to James. Have a good day, you two. And the two made their way 
to the North Knapford Harbor. It was very different from the South Knapford Harbor. More hustle and bustle, cranes and ships, and even a shunter pilot. Bruno wasn't too fond of the new location and put on his brakes. Bruno, what are you playing at back there? This isn't the Knapford Harbor I'm used to. It's big and busy. Uh, look, the sooner we fetch our trucks, the sooner we'll leave. The trucks aren't quite ready yet, James. You may sit in the sirens if you like. Oh, joy. Alright then, come on Bruno. Let's One, wait in the siding away two, from the ambience. Three, four, uh, are you five, counting? six. I'm just counting. It helps me calm myself down. Ah, so you're Bruno. Nice to meet you. Diesel has told me all about you. Say, why not make it into a county game while you wait? I guess, if it passes the time. So while Sonny arranged James's rolling stock for his train, James and Bruno sat in a siding outside the harbor and away from the ambience and did their little counting game while they waited. So, wanna count the cranes? One, two cranes. Good. Now see how many ships do you see. One ship. Good. Now here's a tricky one. Can you count up to the number on my tender? One, two, three, four, five. Your tender reads the number five. <laughs> nice job. <laughs> that was somewhat fun. Hey, Bruno, can you count how many trucks are shunted here? One, two, three, four. There's four trucks. Good job. Your trains are now ready to go, James. Safe travels. James quickly started with his train. They exited the harbor and started to make their way down the main line. You like the color red too? Well, red is a common color for cabooses, often letting people know it's the end of the train. There are other colors too, but I think red is what makes me stand out. <laughs> That's the best part about the color. Come on, Bruno, let's show the island our appearance. Just not too fast, okay, red engine? Oh, trust me, I'm not making that mistake again. Well, that's what happened in 2017. They had to make several stops. Their first stop was just outside of Crosby to drop off a milk tanker at the Sodor Dairy. Next, they arrived at Crosby, dropped off the box vans, and picked up some empty trucks to take to the Center Island Quarry. Bruno was feeling bashful about his new surroundings, but luckily, some of the places, including the countryside, were actually really nice, and Bruno got comfortable. He even met several new faces and friends along the way, and they were all very friendly to Bruno. After dropping off the empties, James picked up some metal material and tools to take to the Kirk Ronan Harbor. It was there where Tess needed to be relocated. Upon her arrival, she's going to need some rails for her to move side to side. James pulled up outside the harbor, ready to put the rails down, but he looked back and saw Bruno was getting a little nervous. James recalled what happened back at the North Knapford Harbor and made a decision. I'm going to drop these rails off. You wait here, Bruno. 
He left Bruno in a siding to wait while James was placing down the rails for tests. Bruno didn't mind. While he waited in the siding, he watched the other trains go about with their activities and talked to himself about their timetables. have a train to take to the wharf and will arrive there at four o'clock. Pip and Emma have a passenger train to take to Ellsbridge at 3.55. Ellsbridge... Upon thinking about Ellsbridge, Bruno felt sad again. I'm back. We have to pick up some logs from the forest and take them to Bickerstown. Um, Bruno? Is everything okay? I saw a train heading to Ellsbridge. That's on the Farquhar branch line. I live working on the South Harbor line. Why am I on the main line? Can't I have one job where I work on the Farquhar line? James was taken aback. It was like looking in a mirror. Bruno wanted to do the jobs he enjoyed too. James felt sympathetic and looked up to Bruno reassuringly. Well, I know that feeling. I want to pull passenger trains rather than some goods trains. But someone once told me that you can't always do the jobs you love. I know it doesn't seem fair, but with your cooperation, it's making a difference for the railway. The two red friends were almost done with their activities for the day and made their way to Henry's forest. Once there, they can be loaded with logs and take them to Vigorstown to have another engine send the logs to the mainland. And there, ready to load the logs, was Diesel 10. All right, these flatbeds need to be loaded. Sure thing, read you loud and clear back there. Hey, eyes on the engine, pal. Oh, <laughs> there's the source of the voice. Sorry, your train is red at both ends. I couldn't tell which side was talking. <laughs> and who do we have here? Got a little compartment on your roof. Quite fascinating. Hey, want to see what I got on my roof? I'm so sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, no. I, I didn't mean to scare you. Look, look. It's it's like a puppet. It's like a puppet. Oh, gosh! Stop scaring him. Just load up my train. Please. <laughs> Land's sake. I just wanted to be friendly. Diesel 10 grumbled as he continued loading up the logs. When the job was done, James quickly left the scene. I'm so sorry about Diesel 10, Bruno. I know the flaw is what makes him scary. Our work is almost over. James arrived at Vickerstown just in time. But it still hasn't calmed Bruno down. Vickerstown Station was another busy location. Engines coming and going, the announcements on the intercom, it was all too much for Bruno to bear. Just then, Rosie approached Bruno. Oh my word! A caboose! I haven't seen one in ages! You must be new here. I'm Rosie. And you are? I am Bruno. And this station has so much activity! Oh, I see. Well, it's okay. Here, I'll take you away from here, get you up to another train, and you'll be on your way. So Rosie shunted Bruno and the rest of the train to their engine heading to the mainland and met up with James, who was trying to look for Bruno. Rosie, where's Bruno? Oh, Bruno the caboose? Oh, yes. I just had him hitched up to Royal Pioneer. They'll be off to the mainland now. The, the mainland? 
In horror, he saw Royal Pioneer departing with Bruno. Royal Pioneer, stop! Luckily, Royal Pioneer didn't go very far. He heard James' shouts and stopped. Oh, dearie me, Mr. James, whatever is going on? You can't take Bruno. He's a new member of the railway, and I don't believe he's ready for trains outside the island. So Rosie replaced Bruno with a new brake van for Royal Pioneer, and Royal Pioneer started off again. Oh, tiddly, widdly, widdly. I better make up for whatever lost time I can. Upon hearing that, Bruno felt terrible for Royal Pioneer. What's the matter, Bruno? I stopped the train for you. You could have ended up lost somewhere on the mainland. I know. I just feel bad for that small engine. He's going to be late. If the logs don't make it to the transfer sightings, the lorries won't take the um, to the toy factory. And if the toy factory doesn't get the logs, there will be no wooden trains to create. And if there's no wooden trains to create, the children will be sad. That's uh, quite the chain reaction. Yeah, it's okay, Bruno. He may be late, but he still cares about his job. Just take deep breaths. Okay. That's it. Focus on what's here now. Perhaps a brake van special would cheer him up. Brake van special? Oh, yes! Bruno was confused about the brake van special, and Rosie explains that it's where visitors come to Sodor and get to ride in a train of brake vans to see most of the sights. Kind of like a party train. Like back at home. Bruno rattled his stepladders again, only this time with excitement. Looks like he's excited to oblige. Splendid, and here come our guests now. A different class 220 pulled into the station with the passengers ready. Meanwhile, James and Bruno entered the Vickerstown shunting yards, and there they saw the train of brake vans ready to be hauled and filled with passengers. There may not be coaches, but at least you're pulling passengers like you wished for. <laughs> you're right, Bruno. Now let's get this party started. James was hitched up to the brake van special, and the passengers trotted up to the brake vans. Dozens of them wanted to get a ride in Bruno. Now remember everyone, only 15 people per brake van. Once everyone was on board, the guard blew his whistle, and the brake van special was ready to roll. James took the brake van special up to Kelstrup Road. From there, they saw the mayor making his speech, making an announcement of the upcoming 20th anniversary of Kelstrup Road Station's open. After the announcement and the sightseeing, it was time to head back to Vickerstown. James and Bruno had a wonderful time with the brake van special. But like all good things, this one comes to an end. I guess it's time to take you back to the Farquhar branch, Bruno. Yep. I actually had a good time with you, James. I hope we can work together again. I'm sure we will. And from that day forward, the mixed traffic locomotive and caboose have remained the firmest of friends. On the island of Sodor, you may notice that there are several castles. While the majority of them are usually in ruins or abandoned, there are other castles that could be used for sightseeing and tourism, such as the old castle on Toby's branch line, 
Sodor Castle on Skarloey Railway, Rolf's Castle, and another castle on Toby's Branch Line at Tidmouth Bay, the Suttery Castle on Edward's Branch Line, Callan Castle on the Misty Valley Branch, and the most popular castle on Sodor, Ulfsted Castle. There you can find some displays of knights in armor, the estate railway with Glenn, Stephen, and Millie, and a dinosaur park as well. There you can find a Sora Poseidon, a Lexivosaurus, an animatronic Megalosaurus, and uh, some kind of notosaur. Maybe a Cryptosaurus? I don't know. But as you may have noticed, Three out of the four dinosaurs there are herbivores. Sir Robert Norrinby figured that it was time to add a couple more carnivores to his park. So he had them ordered, and they were being loaded up at Kirk Ronan Harbor, where Humphrey and Bruno would escort them to Ulfstead Castle. Humphrey was highly delighted. Another trip to one of my most favorite places on the island. You ready to head off to Ulfstead Castle, Bruno? I've never been to a castle before. Oh, you're gonna love it there. There's knights in armor, some engines that work on the estate railway, and my favorite part, the dinosaur park. That's where we'll drop off the carnivore models. The Dilophorus is missing its frill, and it looks much larger than seen in that one movie. Oh, that's just a Jurassic Park exaggeration. The real Dilophosaurus never had frill, or venom. And what you're seeing is the Dilophosaurus's actual size. Say, I could teach you some dinosaur facts along the way. And that's just what Humphrey did. All the way from Kirk Ronan Harbor to Ulfstead Castle, Humphrey lectured Bruno about some dinosaur facts. And it just sucks. The Nanotyrannus, Troodon, and the Dracorex, they're all dubious. Invalid species that never existed in the first place. How do you know all of this? Various resources, my friend. Various resources. This is Shantungosaurus, and it goes to show that Hadrosaurus shouldn't be underestimated. Shantungosaurus is a behemoth, estimated to be upwards of 50 feet or 16 meters in length. Ah, Humphrey! Welcome back! Greetings, Sir Robert. Wow, this place looks a little more guarded than usual. Ever since that failed attempt to steal the Gultron's crown back those two goons back in 2020, Sir Robert decided to up his security. Ah, makes sense. Are you ready to head back to the dinosaur park? I know how much you loved it there the first time visiting. Yes, your grace. Though it has been about three years, I forgot where the park's at. Second track to the right. All right, thank you, kind sir. As Humphrey and Bruno made their way through the dino park, Bruno was in bewildering awe, staring at the lifelike models of dinosaurs. He was so into it that his imagination started to run wild. And the dinosaurs came to life. Whoa, a Guanlong pack about to hunt down a Cantrosaurus. Oh, hey, Bruno. Welcome to the Jurassic period. Hey, what happened to the rails? Bruno, you know quite well that locomotives weren't in the Mesozoic era. Though we're just stopping by to drop off this Dilophosaurus. The Dilophosaurus hopped out of Bruno and scampered off to find some food. Right, time to go. And perfect timing, too. A nearby volcano was erupting. Volcano eruption! Oh, it burns rock! It burns everything! We gotta go! Now! Time tunnel! Whew. Now where are we? 
Now we're in the Cretaceous period. Couldn't we've just dropped off the Mashiachosaurus off from the Jurassic period? Well, not all dinosaurs lived in the same period together. Besides, I know this is a fantasy sequence, but I at least have to have some realism in it. The Mashikasaurus leapt out of Bruno and scampered off to a nearby lake. Hope you get a catch of the day! Well, time to head back to the present. But before they left, they heard some rush sling off to the side. There's something in the bushes. And popping out of the bushes was a baby dinosaur. A young Mudaburosaurus. Aw, it looks lost. We should help it get back with its family. Humphrey was skeptical. Uh, well, okay, but we gotta hurry. I don't want to stick around to see the kids. <laughs> Yikes! A giant walking crocodile! A Sukomemus! I don't think he looks happy with us being in his territory. Let's go! The two rail vehicles and the baby dinosaur scampered away from the Sukomemus and traveled along the terrain to find the nesting ground of the baby Mudaburosaurus. The three eventually ran into a safe haven. It was there they saw Corythosaurus, Shantungosaurus, and some Iguanodon, but no Mudaburosaurus. I'm sure they're here somewhere, said Humphrey. And when you know it, the Mudaburosauruses were right in front of them. In delight, the baby Mudaburosaurus scampered towards its mother, and the two delightfully reunited. Aww, another happy ending. Oh, okay, okay, we're backing up, backing up. Well, all's well that ends well. Now, didn't you say something about leaving before something? Humphrey's face suddenly went pale, for he remembered what he said earlier. Oh, right, the KT extinction. KT extinction? What's that? The sky was suddenly getting brighter, and above them was a colossal asteroid. The meteor strike. Now, Mary Kaplan, I'm already saved.
Are you all right back there? Humphrey and I were dropping off dinosaurs, then we brought a baby Mataborosaurus back to its herd before the KT extinction. An asteroid collision. Wow, that was some dream during your power nap. Yeah. <laughs> well, now that you've had a nice little nap, after hearing the rest of Glenn's story, you ready to head home back in Ellsbridge? I sure am. As the two friends made their way to Ellsbridge, Bruno reflected and smiled about having to learn about prehistoric life. <laughs>